Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies about real life disasters. Get that guy's number, Dick. I'll report him for safety violations. Hey, don't get sentimental on Makes me think I'm gonna die. Just hold that four. For this list, we'll be looking at films depicting natural or man made catastrophes that really happened. We'll be excluding documentaries, which deserve their own ranking. Since we'll be discussing the full plots of these movies, consider this your spoiler alert. Which of these survival narratives frightens or inspires you? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10 Everest. I gotta ask the question, you know I do. Why? Why? Because it's there! In 1996, eight people perished after being trapped in a blizzard while they were on the world's tallest mountain. This 2015 depiction of those tragic events shows the titular peak in all its breathtaking beauty and horror. A few scenes were even shot on location. The film also vividly details the relatable motives and fatal missteps of the climbers who survived as well as those who didn't. Jason Clark and Jake Gyllenhaal portray two of the doomed expedition leaders. Josh Brolin, John Hawks, and now Komori all deliver strong performances as climber clients. Seven. Seven summits. Huh? I mean, I'm so proud of you, Yasuko. So proud. Thank you. While this film isn't fully accurate, it's still a gut wrenching, visually stunning journey to the highest point on Earth. Number 9 K 19 The Widowmaker. This fictionalized account of a real life nuclear accident on a submarine in 1961 flopped at the box office despite a big budget and stellar cast. Liam Neeson played Captain Polenin, who gets demoted in favor of Harrison Ford's Captain Vostrakov. Simulate flooding in the F torpedo room and emergency service. A rapid ascent beneath the ice cap is not advisable, Captain. I did not ask for your advice. The leads lock horns on the maiden voyage of the Soviet Union's first sub, both powered by a nuclear reactor and armed with nuclear missiles. Their clash heats up when the sub's reactor springs a leak in its coolant system. How did this happen? I don't know, Captain. The core is heating up. The mission's over. I'll tell you when the mission is over. As the dueling captains and reactor team battle to save the vessel, crew, and their honor, a mutiny compounds their problems. Awkward accents and historical inaccuracies aside, this flick is worth watching solely for the way Ford and Neeson chew up the underwater scenery. I'll send you to the Gulag, like your father. Well, it's a family tradition, isn't it? Number 8. Tora Tora Tora. An ensemble epic of startling scope, this film about the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor delivers both historical accuracy and riveting battle scenes. It provides a unique perspective on this world altering aerial strike and the events leading up to it. This is mostly due to the fact that half the scenes were shot by a Japanese crew and cast, and the other half by Americans. Radar men, sailors, fearless pilots, high ranking officers, and diplomats in DC all get their moments on screen. The stunts and practical effects are truly mind boggling, including an unplanned one wheeled landing that ended up in the final cuts. Entertaining and informative, this classic brings to life the tragic circumstances that pulled the U.S. into World War II. Number 7. Alive. Mother of God, no! Oh, shit! Run. Come on, run. Run. Come on! What happened? Are we supposed to fly that close to the mountains? On October 13, 1972, the plane carrying a rugby team from Uruguay and other passengers crashed into the Andes Mountains. This movie recounts the survivors' harrowing 72-day-long ordeal. The miracle of the Andes, that's what they called it. 
Poetic monologues by John Malkovich open and close the film, with the in-story narrative kicking off shortly before the plane goes down. After crashing, the team's captain leads an effort to care for the wounded and ration supplies. Two medical students do what they can, but injuries, cold, and starvation take their toll. Now, if the search has been called off, then we're on our own to save our lives, and we've got to eat. You would. Once the group learns a rescue is unlikely, desperate food measures and a hard and fateful trek through the mountains become their only chance. Though this adaptation tactfully handles gruesome subject matter, this definitely isn't a flick for those with a sensitive stomach. Number 6. The Impossible The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. This film mostly shows the destruction through the lens of a single family on a trip to Thailand. Events that the real Maria Bellon, a Spanish doctor, endured are deftly adapted by director J. Bayona and screenwriter Sergio G. Sanchez. Naomi Watts was cast as Maria Bennett, Bellon's English counterpart, while Ewan McGregor as her husband. Tom Holland makes his live-action feature film debut as their oldest son. What if that boy, the Simon, or Thomas, what if they needed help? You'd want someone to help them, wouldn't you? Simon and Thomas are dead! All three leads and the international supporting actors deliver riveting performances. While some criticize the focus on a Western family, the film's depiction of the heroics of the ordinary Thai people won over critics and filmgoers alike. Thank you. Thank you so much. Number 5. Deepwater Horizon On April 20th, 2010, the largest accidental oil spill in history began with a bang. This film does a remarkable job of visually depicting the scope of the destruction. Ominous underwater shots of the gradually failing cement seal build tension. The effects are incredible, with many being done practically, lending a sense of weight and realism to the fiery mayhem. This narrative also shines a light on the enduring psychological trauma of the survivors and the damage done to the marine ecosystem. Seeing Mark Wahlberg's character stagger through the hospital hallway while his co-worker's family accost him lands like a gut punch near the film's end. You on the rig? Yes, sir. My son, get off the rig with you? Rig? Did he get off the rig? Kurt Russell and John Malkovich turn in rousing performances as well in this fiery drama. You're a $180 billion company and you're cheap. That's why we're a $186 billion company. We worry about those bills. I worry about my rig. My crew lives on it. You just rent it. Number four, the perfect storm. A fishing boat called the Andrea Gale was caught in a hurricane and sunk in 1991, tragically taking all hands with her. The film, based on these events, opens with the boat returning after a bad catch. The boat's owner cajoles its captain, played by George Clooney, into going back out despite it being late in the season. Coach, you're trying to put a charge on my ass. You're on a cold streak. I'm trying to encourage you to catch fish. I'm going to bring you more fish than you ever dreamed of. Next time I fish out the Grand Banks, they're not going to be so grand anymore. Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio appears as another fishing boat captain in Clooney's love interest. She tries to convince Clooney's character the weather is too dangerous to no avail. This could be a triple header. Linda, you're behind me, so is your weather. Yeah, but Billy, you gotta go through it to get back. Good point. Billy, you're not gonna like this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You be careful. The ship's luck seems to change after a good catch until it's caught in the hurricane. Clooney's Ahab-like scream as he charges full throttle into a towering rogue wave makes for one hell of a climax. Number 3. Unstoppable While the characters in this high-speed thriller may be fictional, the story was inspired by a real-life incident in 2001. Like in the film, that event saw a pair of railway employees heroically stop a runaway train loaded with the toxic chemical phenol. Choice. 
Denzel Washington nails his depiction of a veteran engineer who risks his life despite getting screwed over by his employer. He epically clashes with a broody Chris Pine who plays Will Coulson, a newbie conductor distracted by problems with his marriage. I've had my training, all right? Yeah, but we're out here in the real world. This ain't training. In training, they just give you an F. Out here, you get killed. The film succeeds at creating both riveting action sequences and well-developed, relatable characters. Its depiction of ordinary Americans coming together in a time of crisis is as inspirational today as it was when the film steamed into theaters. Number 2. Titanic Over 1,500 people died when what was then the world's largest ship sank in 1912. This cataclysm serves as the backdrop for one of the highest grossing films of all time. It opens in 1996 as an undersea explorer discovers a picture of a beautiful woman in the Titanic's wreckage. Within the drawing, they see a woman wearing an uber-valuable necklace which the explorer is trying to locate. Rose, now an old woman, reaches out and explains everything that happened. Titanic was called the ship of dreams. And it was. It really was. Kate Winslet's turn as the young Rose launched the English actress into international stardom, and it's easy to see why. Although we know the ship will sink, the desire to see how Rose's and Jack's love story concludes kept us captivated till the end. Never let go. I will never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Apollo 13 uh, This is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Houston's problem became Hollywood's solution in the cinematic love letter to the U.S. space program that's as uplifting today as it was when it was released in 1995. Like the astronauts themselves, the actors are the best of the best. Gentlemen. It's been a privilege flying with you. Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, and Kevin Bacon perfectly portray a beleaguered flight crew. Ed Harris plays Gene Kranz, the mission's flight director, who leads efforts to assist the spacefarers. This could be the worst disaster NASA's ever experienced. With all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Together, these teams tackle every complex problem that comes their way. It leads to a thrilling scene where we hope they survive the bumpy ride back to Earth. Few films stick the landing quite like this space disaster film did. Apollo 13's warm critical reception was appropriate since failure for these astronauts was never an option. Hello, Houston. This is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.